Welcome to the gavel, everyone. I'm Terry Ikumi, and here's what the National Assembly was up to this past week. Beginning with the Senate and a vote of confidence passed on Senate President Gotswil Akbabu by senators on the heels of a rumored impeachment. Within the week also, the Senate met with the chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service on the proposed tax reform bills. So here's a report on these and more from the Red Chamber. Northern senators were alleged to have been behind a move to impeach the Senate president. And although the Senate president had dismissed it as fake news, lawmakers were apparently uncomfortable with the development. Both northern senators and their colleagues from the south have been working in committees and in the Senate harmoniously. Therefore, any attempt to bring any kind of discord along regional lines in this institution is not going to auger well for either this institution or for this nation at large. This is the premier legislative house of this nation. I've seen no reason why such rumors should emanate. And believe you me, if there are indications that we're not comfortable with their leadership or the leadership of the Senate President, we're not going to do a fake news. We'll come frontally and tell you that we are not comfortable. Now, this is, this is who we are. The Senate Senator Ninge has moved a motion that a vote of confidence should be passed on the leadership of the Senate and seconded by the Senate Senator Abbas. This is further amended by the minority leader of the Senate that it should be the entirety of the Senate and not just Northern Senators. Those in support that this vote of confidence on the Senate leadership be carried. Say aye. Those again, say nay. They are not here. The eyes have it. Having put the matter to rest, Senator Sani Musa raised a red flag over the threat of collapse of the Zungeru Bridge, a critical federal infrastructure in Niger State, which has become a threat to human lives. The diversion and disruption caused by the current state of, of the bridge has invariably restricted human and economic activities. Urge the Federal Ministry of Works to utilize the contingency funds uh, domiciled in the Federal Ministry of Works or funds domiciled in the service wide routes to cater for the immediate repairs of the Zungori Bridge and all other bridges that are in this state of disrepair across the nation. Meanwhile, after President Bola Tinubu submitted four tax reform bills to the National Assembly, the chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service appeared before the Senate Committee on Finance for a crucial interface and status report on the tax reform policies. We look forward to hearing from the chairman about the progress, challenges and future plans of the FIRS in implementing these reforms. This briefing will not only inform us of the current state of affairs, but will also offer an opportunity to align our legislative efforts with the broader goals of the tax reform. I encourage my distinguished colleagues to engage actively, ask pertinent questions, and offer constructive inputs as we work together towards building a more resilient economy. We want our law to be simple that everybody can just read, and uh, neutrality of taxes, meaning that we want people to pay their only fair share of the benefits. As Mr. President has said time without number, that he is interested in taxing the prosperity, not the poverty, is interested in taxing the fruit, not the seed, is interested in taxing returns, not investment. At the interactive session, members of the committee sought several clarifications, including the reason behind the name alteration to the Nigeria Revenue Service. Because of this global uh, online charging that we're doing, today we have to open accounts abroad to actually collect those uh, online charges that is due to us here in Nigeria. Just to harmonize what we do with what we should be called. Other senators were clearly dissatisfied with the bills. Now you are not bringing everything together again at revenue. I'm coming at revenue point. 
Instead of you to collect for federal government different, okay, if you say for federation, we expect you to collect only for federation, not for federal government. So that the federation, the, the federation in the subnationals will not have question to ask on federation. But if you are collecting for federal government and federation together, I think tax is too much and it's becoming bogus and becoming what we are running away from. Mr. Chairman, let this bill look into by the set of committee before it goes because it will not see the light of the day. The FIRS boss allayed fears of possible introduction of new taxes through the reforms. Tax reform is not and will not increase or introduce any taxes. If anything, because when we talk about harmonization, it actually reduced the number of taxes that will be paid and also increased the simplicity and efficiency of tax administration in Nigeria. The Senate committee hopes to convene another meeting with the service before the scheduled public hearing on the matter. Now let's turn our attention to the House of Representatives where lawmakers are calling for the immediate reversal in the price increase in petrol and cooking gas. And drawing attention to the violation of the Fiscal Responsibility Act by the President for failing to submit the MTEF later than the four months provided in the Act. Also, within the week, the House of Representatives Committee on Banking Regulations met with the Central Bank Governor for an interactive session on policy measures, where Mr. Cardoso revealed that the foreign exchange reserves have grown significantly to $39.12 billion as of October 11, 2024, from $34.70 billion at the end of June 2024. Following the inhumane treatment meted out on the Nigeria Super Eagles in Libya, the House of Representatives on Wednesday urged the federal government to invite the Libyan ambassador to Nigeria for an explanation. Raised as a matter of urgent national importance by Honorable Kabiru Ahmadu, the Chairman House Committee on Sports, the House is further asking the NFF to make a formal complaint to CAF and FIFA. Mr. Speaker, the following prayers were resolved. Number one, to condemn in totality the inhuman treatment prostitution of the super eagles of the Federation by the Libyan Football Federation. Number two, to sympathize with the super eagles and appreciate their patriotism. Number three, to urge the Nigerian Football Federation, NFF, to make an official complaint to the Confederation of African Football Cup and the Federation of International Football Association, PIPA, for the dehumanization of the Super Eagles players and NFL contingent by the Libyan authorities on the 13th to 14th October 2024 in Libya. Meanwhile, a bill for an act to amend the Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria Act for the establishment of a federal college of agriculture, Kagago Kaduna State, has killed second reading. I rise to move a bill for an act to amend the Federal Medical Center Act and establish Federal Medical Center in Kachia, Kaduna State, and for related matters. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to move that a bill for an act to amend the Federal Colleges of Education Act, CAP F8 laws of the Federa Federation of Nigeria 2004, to provide for the establishment of Fed Federal College of Education, Oye Akoko, be read the second time. With over two months to the end of the fiscal year, the status of the medium-term expenditure framework came into focus in the House of Representatives. Federal government must... Raising a motion of urgent national importance, a lawmaker highlighted a violation of the Fiscal Responsibility Act by the President. The House further notes that Section 11, Subsection 1B, stipulates that the federal government must, not later than four months, before the commencement of the next financial year, further worry that the time the National Assembly requires to exercise its functions as enshrined in Section 88, Subsection 2B, is technically being taken away by the non compliance of Section 11B of Physical Responsibility Act by the executive. Another motion of urgent national importance was raised regarding the recent increase in pump price of petroleum products. Also worried that a less urgent and pragmatic steps are taken to control the rising cost of petrol and cooking gas, 
the nation will go into economic crisis, leading into negative outcomes like increased crime rate and mortality. Resolve to call on the federal government to reverse the recent form price hike and take immediate steps to stabilize petrol and cooking gas prices. The increases of food in this country, somebody who is earning 70,000 a month, his 70,000 cannot last him for three days. We cannot make a caricature of the parliament by proliferating ad hoc committees to solve problems, whereas this same house has in its creation mandated a committee or an ad hoc committee to investigate issues or concerns in the petroleum industry. The House of Representatives is calling for enhanced provision of legal and institutional framework and professional capacity for the public procurement in the country. The House reached a resolution after adopting a motion by Honorable Unyime Idem, drawing attention to what he describes as poor budgeting for the Bureau of Public Procurement. Recognizes the need to ensure monitoring and surveillance of federal government procurement procedures and ongoing projects across the six geopolitical zones. Aware that the budget allocation for the Bureau in the Appropriation Act 2024 is only 2 billion naira, 2.2 billion naira. On Wednesday, the House of Representatives Committee on Banking Regulations met with the Central Bank Governor for an interactive session on policy measures and strategies to address domestic macroeconomic challenges. For a country that relies on imports, this exchange rate crisis is not just an inconvenience, it is devastating. Nigerians are yet to see any real improvement in their day-to-day -day lives. Again, I feel we are all responsible. Unemployment, which increased by 5.3% in the first quarter of 2024, continues to climb as businesses are forced to cut jobs, largely due to harsh monetary environment and an unstable exchange regime. The governor of the CBN spoke on the plans to address the spiraling inflation in the country and the country's GDP growth rate. Our focus has been on how to stabilize the economy restore investor confidence in financial markets and provide a seamless path to sustainable growth. Our areas of focus include addressing inflationary pressure, stabilizing the exchange rate, enhancing financial system supervision, fostering financial inclusion, and enhancing transparency in our monetary policy decisions and communications. Projections indicate a growth rate of 3.2% and 3.3% for 2024 and 2025 respectively. Although positive, these estimates remain below historical averages, suggesting moderate rather than robust expansion. According to Mr. Cardoso, the foreign exchange reserves have grown significantly by $39.12 billion as at October 11, 2024, from $34.7 billion US dollars at the end of June this year. This, he says, is driven largely by foreign capital inflows, receipt from crude oil-related taxes and third party. Meanwhile, the Chairman, House Committee on Disability Matters, Honorable Bashiru Dawudu, has lamented that despite a clear timeline for the commencement of the implementation of the passage of the Discrimination Against Persons with Disability Act 2018, signed by former President Muhammad Buhari, ministries, departments and agencies are still not implementing its provisions. He said this at an investigative hearing to access the level of compliance to the act by MDAs held by the committee on Monday. We're looking into two pressing areas. Accessibility. The law is unambiguous about that. The word that is used is shall. The persons with disability shall have the right to access into public buildings. Sanctions. 
the act also provides for sanctions. So when you are supposed to comply and it's passed and you are not complying, then sanctions are very important. Welcome back to the gavel. In the coming weeks, we, as we've already begun to see, the issue of the bill for the Federal Road Safety Corps to have an arms bearing squad which scaled second reading in the House of Representatives is expected to generate some major public reactions, even as the House prepares for a public hearing. And while we await that, here's the breakdown on that bill with the Policy and Legal Advocacy Center plaque. I think for a lot of people, yes, would like to see a very effective um, Federal Road Safety Corps, would like to see the Road Safety Corps able to better perform and deliver on the powers granted it under the Act. Uh, I think for a lot of uh, citizens as well, uh, they would like to see a much more effective Federal Road Safety Commission. Uh, but citizens are also very concerned about um, how powers are used. And in, in this country, a lot of times when people um, have powers, they, they misuse it, they abuse it. And we see that with not just security services, we see that in, in people having their little kingdoms, whether in the civil service or even in the private sector where uh, they exert powers. And, you know, uh, my very uh, iconic musician, uh, Fela Nicola Bakuti calls it power show. Uh, so there's too much of power show. And my worry uh, with this bill is that when you look at the functions of the Federal Road Safety Commission, um, it's mostly um, for it to ensure safety um, on, on the highway. It's uh, mostly to uh, license drivers uh, it's mostly to be innovative in creating mechanisms, but also uh, circumstances that make it possible for people to drive for um, less accidents on the road and so on. So it, it would seem to me that um, when it comes to the issue of apprehension of, of persons who violate traffic rules, uh, we might perhaps be needing to look at what um, ways we can try to achieve this technologically. Um, I, I would rather support a situation where monies that perhaps have been proposed to be used to procure arms for the Federal Road Safety Commission is used to procure better technology to enable the Road Safety Commission to have better technologically um, advanced a means of documenting um, evidences uh, of motorists, of motor vehicles, uh, be able to use and deploy technology to uh, check road conditions, perhaps even using satellite information to provide and, and um, um, provide information for motorists to use, to know what the world and weather conditions are so that motorists can be advised. We get a sense of what traffic situation is uh, on interstate highways, on major highways in the country. Um, and if there is a need that the road safety feels that um, they need some armed enforcement in the course of their duties and operation, then I think the synergy between the road safety and the police becomes important. Uh, let's not forget that the road safety core was carved out of the Nigeria police. Um, and it was uh, Wale Shoinka who advocated this very strongly. If you remember the, the first core marshal of the Federal Road Safety Commission, so Lu Agunloye, who was uh, Wale Shoinka's uh, nominee. In fact, it was Wale Shoinka himself, and he was uh, succeeded by his uh, protege, Agunloye, as well. So we, we basically need to see um, a much more technologically advanced means of enforcing uh, traffic um, regulations and laws. Uh, the idea that you can enforce everything by force of arms is perhaps what has led us to where we are today, the brutishness of, 
of state and security uh, is quite strong in Nigeria. The whole idea of a second reading is that it is debated amongst members. Members take a position, they question uh, the bill, they ask the sponsors of the motion, and then when it passes at that stage, it goes for public hearing. Even though it has passed for second reading, it should be subjected to proper public hearing. And people, uh, there are different stakeholders. Citizens are very concerned about the abuse of arms by security uh, forces. There are other arms of security services that would have their own views on this. Um, within the Federal Safety Commission, for instance, it needs to come to that public hearing to state why this bill should pass. Uh, and the mover of the bill um, or the sponsor of the bill needs to also state why he is sponsoring the bill. So I do hope that the National Assembly understands very, very seriously that this is a bill of serious national importance and will subject this to proper legislative process and that it will listen to what citizens are saying during the public hearing. <laughs>
to ensure that we are, most of our people are ready for the development coming in. Presently, we are working on the farmers because now food has been a major problem. Feeding ourselves. Like I said, the Bejuleki has the largest land mass. We just distributed about 500 uh, bags of fertilizer recently. We are going to do another one in the next two weeks with seedlings. Seedlings and uh, stock, like cassava stock, uh, potato, I mean, tomato seedling, pepper seedlings, and all those stuff that they will be using. So, and also for the fish farmers too, we are going to give them this fish tank. So that we, we want to start with 10 groups. We establish 10 groups. We, we give you the fish tanks with all the feedings and all the fish. At least we'll, we'll monitor them. If you, if you can prove yourself to be, um, to, to have interest in this, we, we can start taking some individuals later, but we want to start with 10 groups. So that will be 10 major tanks. I think it's about 4,000 liters a tank. That's what they use for this fish. That will take about three, uh, 3,000 uh, fish each, each. So we're looking about, that means you have 3,000 into 10, that's about 30,000 uh, fishes for, for the youth. So, so these are areas that we are trying to ensure that we would not just give them what you will just take and go. We want to ensure that we monitor what you'll be doing so that at the end of the day, we can be sure that uh, most of our youths would be engaged. And that's all the time we have on The Gavel this week. Thanks for your time as well. To send feedback to The Gavel at channelstv.com. I'm Terry Ikumi. Goodbye.